Greetings and salutations, everyone. Um, it is server dying day, I guess is the day to call it. It is. This is the last day of the hardcore server, and I know that a couple of people out there have recorded how I made it to 20 videos, or whatever, however you want to do it, and I wanted to do the same. So this is what's going on. What's really awesome is you can actually see my two different characters right now on the leaderboard. Um, Zamus, who I, th I thought they were going to wipe the leaderboards um, after uh, after they, they went over to the land of Lost Souls. So, I don't know. Anyway, poor Zamus here was busy helping Tobrel when she died uh, due to a very series of unfortunate barrel explosions. <laughs> in a siege breaker which i had already um already crushed uh on reaper earlier and then uh damas garobo here just squeaked in <laughs> just squeaked in under the wire in fact i have to go to work in less than an hour um and that was it that was the time i have so thankfully i don't have to like power level anymore i can relax and just record this video Otherwise, it would have been a very late video, I think, indeed. So, how I did things, how I succeeded. I've been asked for build videos now a couple of times. And I thought, well, you know what? We'll make it a how I got to 20 slash build video at the same time. And we'll just kind of check it out. So, taking a look at the character sheet. Bard 18, Rogue 2. Don't look at my int, I because I, I ate an int tome uh, with my 5,000 favor. Uh, but you can look at my charisma <clears throat> my charisma here so basically the build is one level of rogue as many levels of bard in a row that you think you can get away with in my case it was i think it was i think level 11 no level definitely level 10 definitely but if you're playing on the hardcore server you want to have your second rogue level at level 10. And the reason why is so you can have evasion, so you can do the swim in um, another man's treasure. And the reason why that's important is your saves are actually really strong with the way this build works. Um, so let's <clears throat> let's take a quick look at the the basic parts of the build, and then you can go from there. So uh, when you first started out, it's a half elf, and it's a half elf specifically for this warlock dilettante. Feet, and you toggle it on and you do 1d4 points of fire damage with attacks and spells but for spells it's for per spell level firing off every two seconds so and that is powered by your spell your uh, fire spell power so you can increase that with gear not really enhancements with this build but primarily gear and I don't know for a fact but I'm pretty sure from what I was seeing the whether or not the spell crits or not is powered entirely off of your um, whatever the spell is that you're casting so in my case they were sonic spells and I had the biggest possible um, spell power item I could and the biggest possible uh, crit chance I could and they always crit it together I never had the not that I not that I saw and caught and paid attention to anyway I never had the sonic part not crit and the fire part did crit or vice versa if one critted they both critted so i'm pretty sure they're tied together and that frees you up a lot of stuff that means you don't have to have a uh, spell power item with a with a critical you don't have to have a lore for that or you can just use a generic lore which worked out really nicely for me leveling up because that let me run around with the brovian scepter in my offhand but we're kind of skipping skipping ahead so once we picked half elf and we took our rogue level how i pretty much went about things was counting how many feats or sorry how many skills i needed at each level and for me that includes uh spot search disable traps uh, uh spell power and perform so i need two four six eight points per level and then i also like the idea of having um, UMD so that's nine points a level 
And the way that it worked out for me was a thinking intelligence of 16? Question mark? Yeah, 16. Um, to kind of carry things over and get everything done. So I maxed my charisma. I put in 16 intelligence. And then I put every other point I had in the con, which was only 14. But that was more than enough to get things done. I'm just glancing to make sure I'm not lying. <clears throat> but that was more than enough to get things done uh, overall. For my first level feat, we took insightful reflexes. I know you're thinking, what? That seems odd. But by tanking our dexterity and being a evasion-based character, you have to do something. And I'm trying to find the bloody feet. It should be under defensive feats, right? No? Yeah, there it is. Defensive feats. So that lets us use our, dex our intelligence modifier instead of dexterity. So if we just look at the difference here, it's currently 11 because of the plus 5 tome. But if you take off the three or the two points from the plus five tome, it's still significantly higher than my dexterity of zero. And we were constantly, we had good, really good saving throws is what I'm trying to say at the end of the day. And we were pretty confident in our ability to dodge most things on elite. Uh, let's see. So that's the, that's the main part of the first level build the second thing that you're going to look for is i took sonic blast this spell has really impressed me uh but you could also take expeditious retreat it's kind of a toss-up of which of those two spells oh, you know what i got ahead of myself with the rogue level um after your rogue level you start taking your bar levels and that's when you need to pick your feet um or your spell which again for me expeditious retreat and or sonic blast they're kind of on par with each other um, but either way, it kind of worked out. Now, because this was my, my not my first character on this server, I immediately ran to the bank. I immediately grabbed like 500 plat. Kind of took care of my other tomes, which in my case was search, spot, and disable. Plus three, plus three, plus two accordingly. Because I purchased all of the, all of the expansions or had them gifted or whatever. Uh... So I had those boosts there. Of course, the the racial stat tome and the... Or not racial stat tome. The racial uh, tree tome and a universal tree tome. So I had those, those tomes on my side. But then what I would do is I would buy whatever hireling I could afford. Prob usually the paladin. Because also sometimes I would grab whatever uh, stones that I happen to have. From the daily dice, I'd eat a couple to get to level two. Uh, as a first life character, you just don't need that many. You can get up there pretty fast. So I would, I had a couple sitting around. Get to level two, buy the level two paladin from the guy in the harbor, and then go do Corthos Island. Really relying on the on the level two guy, taking my bard level, having either run fast or um, that sonic blast, turning on my feet. When you do that, you're basically doubling, at least during the low levels, you're basically doubling your spell power. So for this four spell points, I was basically doing 2d4 points of damage, or 2d2 plus 2 plus, what, a d4? Whatever the math works out. But essentially I was doubling my damage per spell point, which was really good in the low levels, and then even better later, later on. Um... So then as we proceeded up, our next big feat choice uh, came down to which spells that we want, or not spells, which, um, how, what we were going to do to power our spells, our meta magic feats. I just took Maximize first, Empower second, Heighten third, uh, Quicken, and then finally Enlarge Person. Be careful on this Enlarge Person. I'm pretty sure that's part of the reason I got killed in Siegebreaker on Xamus over here. Is I'm pretty sure I had just turned on enlarge and I had not gotten used to the new blast radius and I'm, I think that's what happened I think that's what got me even though I've never been knocked down in that spot before I I, I feel like that's what happened um, so yeah the, the rest of the builds pretty self-explanatory you take those spell power feats in that order um, you come over here 
I took uh, 44 ranks in Spellslinger. I have, obviously, the 3 AP to pick up a Charisma over here in the Half Elf Tree. And then I was starting to go up Swashbuckler for Spell Power, ironically, in the Loud and Clear, because I was just looking for any single point of Spell Power I could for Sonic Spell Power to just crush the enemies as quick as I possibly could. Just run in, kill a guy, run in, kill a guy, run in, kill a room. Um, because you, you have a surprisingly large amount of burst group DPS, which we'll get, we'll, we'll touch on in a second. And so I was working my way up, up the tree like this. I was about to take, uh, swashbuckling and uncanny dodge when beef made a really key suggestion. He's like, there's so many good defensive traits in war chanter. So I started taking a look like, yeah, so I get plus one constitution yeah, I get 6 MMR and armor class. Or sorry, PRR and armor class. I get plus 1 weapons, which helps, you know, boost your your spell damage. Like, okay, well, by doing those things, then I get access to a sprint boost. By doing those things, all of a sudden my songs start giving me an extra 6 to my resistances, which seems really good. And that turns on the fact that I can my songs can do... 6 DR slash dash and an extra 6 to PRR so now I'm getting 12 for my PRR you see where I'm going this it just like steamrolled on me way quick that I didn't even realize how much defensive power there was in the war chanter tree to go with my spell chanter tree so while I was leveling up I'm like alright I'm going to start by first thing I took was sonic blast get your SLA then the next thing I did was I powered up my magical studies so I could regenerate spell points because you're running out of spell points really quickly on these first couple of levels when you're doing level four quests, but you're level, you know, five or whatever, until you kind of get up above the, the level cap on the hardcore server and start hitting things four levels below. Until you make that leap forward, you're constantly struggling to get enough mana to take care of business. All this is to rush to uh to shout to shout right uh, also real quick i'm going to say i liked reverberate i i used it a lot i i used it a whole lot more than i ever thought i would a single target dot came in useful in quests like um let the sleeping dust lie uh boss fights there's a lot of times i would dot a guy a dot a boss duck around a corner especially spell casting bosses all the time like crazy so big i'm i'm now a fan of reverberate in a way that i was not before um so yeah do that uh i did evocation spells because obviously i want people to fail their saving throws on my sound bet on my sonic blast my sound burst my reverberate etc because that little mini stun is very clutch especially later um when you're doing like 16 17 18s 19s 20 21s a level 19 hitting that little mini stun they stun for four seconds that's time for like your spells to almost come completely off cooldown and you can bam 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 again um so yeah every point of evocation i was happy to have including the fact that i got this sage's locket from doing one of the the wayloon prison quests i have to stop and think about it because i don't do them very often on live because the gear is not particularly good. But this is plus four evocation DCs. I didn't even know they had one of these. So plus four evocation DCs. Had I still had a character that had uh, one of the cloaks that gave it these stacking plus two evocation DCs. My DCs could have been insanely good. Uh, like right now it's 40. That's That caught a lot of monsters. A lot of monsters. But if I could have gotten 42 and oh also i have to tell you this but i also was constantly spending my mysterious remnants on lasting elixirs of eagle's majesty to boost it an extra one like all the time just bam 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 that's where pretty much they all went whatever my primary caster stat was i pretty much always had at least two of them on that character and sometimes i had a lot of secondary ones um, like a lot of my characters had insightful reflexes so I'd have Int, 
Or I'd even carry like a strength one and a couple of con ones for when I felt like I needed a little bit more hit points. And then finally I just gave up and I started carrying, I, I went ahead and just pulled the trigger on a five stacks of the Supreme Agility ones and just was like, whatever, I'm good. Don't be afraid to use these free DDO points that you're earning on the hardcore server by having characters get to level seven or eight or nine and then die and then do it again. Don't be afraid to burn those points. I sure as hell didn't. Uh, so anyway, get you're rushing to Greater Shout. Then you're grabbing things like Song Trance to make spells cheaper. Uh, freedom of Movement uh, in particular. This uh, Fast Healing. Like all of this Tier 4 tree is beautiful. I loved it. And it was so popular for my teammates that I was using to level. When I finally got my teammates who perished caught back up to my wizard Zamus that we talked about that was on the uh over on the uh reaper leaderboard when i finally got them caught back up to her because she was my my reaper character and we were doing reaper stuff together they were so unhappy they're like no we want the bard back the healing the mana the spell like the freedoms i'm like guys too bad <laughs> too bad so sad they finally were okay with it but that's how powerful it is to be the spell singer in the group towards the end like i was doing quests i have never done before on elites completely scared out of my mind in pugs telling them i'd know nothing but i will help out as much as i possibly can and all i half the time all i had to do was spell sing to everybody nobody had nobody was significantly low on mana Nobody really got that low on hit points unless there was a crazy, crazy combat. More often than not, I was the one having to shrine because I had ran myself out of mana trying to be a helper. Where really all I had to do was sit there and cast, uh, after I sang to everybody, and I cast like uh, GH and Blur if they needed it. Really all I had to do was sit there and spam Haste and, uh, and Rage. No one would have cared. I didn't have to kill anything if I didn't want to. They would have been more than happy to have me be there and just do the spell stuff. It was ridiculous how much people loved the the spell regeneration, the hit points, the mana, everything. It was insane. Speaking of insane, I know a lot of people out there are not big fans of Horn of Thunder. This thing, I tried it on live. I didn't like it. But on the hardcore server, I needed every single point of uh, SLA that I could find. So I took it. I took Horn of Thunder. I know Beef it was on his build that he was experimenting with. He took the Mass Hold, which probably also was really strong. But Horn of Thunder, man, I was just blasting whole rooms of mobs at once and just killing them like crazy. Big fan of Horn of Thunder. It's a huge boon to Bards. Big fan. Big, big fan. And then Prodigy, I took uh, the two points in just to kind of like help out with stuff. You know, a little bit more spell penetration. Towards the end, I was doing a lot more dancing balls when I was pugging, not when I was playing on my own. When I was soloing, it was run, get a big group of guys together, turn around, shout, greater shout, horn of thunder, sonic blast, sonic blast, shout, SLA. Horn of Thunder. You know, it's just like, blam, 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 blam. I didn't have time to cast any SLAs. But when you had the people, especially in the hardcore server right now, where it seems like it is five ranged uh, people with crossbows for every every other person in the group that's not, I was that person that wasn't ranged. So all these times I was like, dance there, dance there, dance there. Why, why they were just blasting everything to death it was great it was a very good build for that kind of stuff in fact this is my third attempt at this build the other two characters literally only died because of reapers and they only died because of reapers that spawned on top of, or jumped to on top of me and i was unable to get all of the slas to fire through before they killed me that is how good the idea of stay over there let your party members range everything down and just like blast away this build was amazing for that kind of stuff uh rounding out the rest like i said we talked about war chainer we talked about spell singer rounding out the rest of my stuff 
pretty early on as well, I started taking swashbucklers. Because basically once you get here, you can't take anything else until, like, obviously level 12. So you end up with these extra points. And for me, those extra points went into swashbuckler for two reasons. Went in here for three, four to dodge, which was pretty good. My dodge, oh, it says four now. I had it to, to 17 at one point, but I swat, I switched a lot of gear around uh, to, to be a little bit more DC-based there in the last couple of quests. But this, uh, this four to dodge put us to like 17 dodge with some reasonable gear. It was, it was not hard at all to have. And the key for me is deflect arrows and fast movement. The faster you get through the quest, the more favor you're getting per hour, the more XP you're getting per hour, the more likely it is that you can run away from the big scary thing that's triple tapping you. The faster you are, the better. Fast movement was amazing. Plus, of course, the sprint boost. All great. Also, having the ability to cast Expeditious Retreat on myself instead of having to tie up one of my slots, gear slots, for uh, for a uh, speed item was also really good. And again, like I said, War Chanter also ended up giving me, I don't know, like 30 hit points. And then over here in Harper Agent, I picked up uh, 15 more plus uh, one more energy resistance to give me an unbuffed static... Uh, hit point total of 492 at level 21 did I ever did I actually take a reaper level or an uh, epic level I don't think I did I never did um, but of course with a rage that knocks it up to 512 which was really solid um, let's talk about gear for just a quick second and then I want to come to talk about my path and my plan to get here and the mistakes that I made along the way so for this particular build, it was very, very important to get some sort of death block item in place. And a lot of my gear right now is absolutely atrocious. In fact, I'm wearing a death warden to give me healing lore and efficient metamagic and power, which I don't have. An exceptional devotion, which I barely cast any healing spells. But I'm also wearing the hands of House Drasco to give me a bunch of healing stuff. Doesn't matter. I didn't use it. I was basically wearing the hands of Jurasco to give the healing amp, and that's about it. I literally, most of the time, I ran around with these gloves on once I got them for a disabled device, whatever. Uh, if I had it, I would have loved to redo a lot of my gear um, to just have more hit points. You know, I don't have vitality slotted right now because all of my tapestries that I had went in from characters that were still alive, either went into getting a Tomatic Lavalier, which I still have on, even though I'm not sure why, and that was it. I didn't take time to farm up more more taps because when I decided to play this character, I had less than three days. Uh, my character died, I think, on Monday? I think my, I think my character, maybe it was, yeah, I think it was Monday. I think the character that I was using, that I was going to make my, my new favorite character died on Monday. So, and I took the rest of the evening off, basically. Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today was the days that I powered this character the rest of the way on the favor. And we'll talk about some of the problems I had with that in just a minute. Um, I was fortunate enough to get these researcher's leathers um, yesterday. That was huge. The extra healing amp and false life together on an armor was great. Of course, the Mythic 4 boost doesn't hurt. Um, I was able to get a Cloak of the City's Champion out of a Sharn Welcome, which is a lot of constitution and parrying, which helps with our saving throws. Uh, I managed to find a couple of different Con 8 belts, which is one of the problems I had. I actually pulled one of the really good Bard belts, but I just couldn't slot it in because I couldn't find constitution anywhere else. If I could have found Constitution on a ring, with like especially with a slot, like if I could have made Death Block of Constitution 8, I would have been in heaven. But I couldn't, so this is kind of how we, we, we dominoed it. No. Is it Legoed it? There's a game. Jenga? Jenga together? Tetris. How we Tetris our gear together. 
Uh, then I got this Sage's Spectacles today. Uh, doing, I don't know, one of the Stormhorn quests. And Intelligence 8 plus Combustion just happened to work out perfectly to become my fire spell power for the Warlock Dilettante feat. So things that I was really looking for in my gear, gear boiled down to keeping an eye out for the materials I needed to craft Sonic Lore. The resonating part was pretty easy. I would have to pull up the, the planner to tell you what the ingredients are. In fact, maybe I should just do that super fast. But it, the real challenge for, for the crafting was not the um, weapon, resonance, and resonance lore. Was not like this part. Blades of the Dark Six and Sparkling Dust. Whatever. The Amulets of the Lost Empire. Okay, sure. Sometimes that's hard. But once you get to like level 14, it's not that hard. It was this house sealed letter. I literally even had to ask people to send me copies or send me house uh, letters. This was actually very much difficult to come by. It's an uncommon or uh, one. It's only from lore type chests. So it can only really come from backpacks or bookshelves. It just was very difficult to get a reasonable number coming in. So I only ended up making, I think, I made two orbs and the, the dagger I'm continuously using. And I would have loved to take in the time to build a bigger dagger, but I just never had any more materials. I never had any more house sealed letters. It was, it was definitely a real challenge on that particular crafting mat. Um, so yeah, I think that's most of the gear. Uh, one of the reasons that we're still wearing the voice of the master, and we also have our... Elite Spider Colt is just to keep our saving throws up high. Um, let me switch that off. You'll notice we'll lose one here. And then I think we... This is just skills, right? Yeah. For a long time, before I had found a... Uh, this particular Bracers of Order and Chaos in my in my bank, I because it's resistance 6, I even crafted a 5 rings that I was using in my trinket slot for a long time. There was like five constitution and four uh, resistance to give my saves and that extra four. And then for a long time, I had a uh, the the beholder stock from Giant Hold. I had that in my in my trinket slot because it gave plus four to my stats uh, to my resistances. And then I was able to slap something else in my ring slot. I don't even know at the time. So a lot of those things came in very, very important. Figuring out how to maximize my reflex save, maximize my fortitude save. It just those were the two saves that I was worried about. I wasn't worried about will because I had the song that gave me freedom of movement. Um, and I just, those, the two saves that were important were reflex and fortitude. Now, I did everything I could to boost those as high as I could, as often as I could. I ran Rage all the time. I was always looking for the biggest con item I can. For a long time, I even had straight up plus, like, I was wearing a Resistance 4 item. And I found a Constitution, uh, or a, ref a Fortitude Save 5 or 6 item. I wore it just to boost the, the Fortitude Save. And the reason why is because I died to a Disintegrate on one of these bards soloing um elite demon queen the six man i had done everything else in the quest except for um monkeys and i just couldn't quite dps down one monkey straight up at the time i should have just waited for backup because there's another guy on the way out i just should have waited for him but i i got impatient I was trying to st stand behind one pillar and to block all three monkeys and I ended up stepping out and uh, to charm one so I could try to kill another one and one of them managed to tag me and I rolled a two. Two plus 20 failed that saving throw. But I'm pretty sure that saving throw would have been like 24, 25. Have, have your fortitude saves up. 
Uh, so yeah, that's like the gear. That was that was the problems. Reflex save is pretty obvious. There's so many chain lightnings. There's so many fireballs. There's so many comet falls. Just those are the spell. Those are the ones that the, the bad guys like to hit, in my opinion. Again, having freedom of movement, a non-dispellable freedom of movement, like off of the Bard song, really helped uh, with the other stuff as well. Uh, I've already talked many times about spawn screen and dying to strength damage, which is another part of the reason why as soon as I found this belt that happened to have plus 8 strength on it, I never took it off. It's like, no, this is mine forever. Now, let's pull up my shame, my adventure compendium. And why do I say it's that? Because this was a character that I was using to... I, it was going to be a side project in case my main character had a problem and I needed to get favor. And it looks pretty good, right? On elites, total chaos. These are the, the new uh, Keep on the Borderland quests that just came out. So yeah, some of them are epic elites because I went and I did some of them already. But as you'll notice, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Everything's done. Everything's done. No shame. Oh, here's a hard. What's this hard? Devil Assault. All right, I can understand it. What? Here's some not done. Temple of Elemental Evils. Okay, I can understand that. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. And Tempest Spine. Okay, well, that's odd, but usually maybe you just couldn't find a Tempest Spine run. Looking good, looking good. Newcomers. That's not that hard. You should be able to do newcomers. And I could have. But uh, what happened was, is I was working on these things, working on these things, helping Tobrell, and my main character died. Zamus died. And in a fit of anger and rage, I took this character, said, F it, I'm just going to try to get the 20 now. Because in my mind, when I died on uh, last Thursday on Zamus, I only had... Uh, eight days to try to get the 5,000 favor. And I was like, that's just not enough time for the way I've been playing. And there's no way I could help somebody do that. So I was like, all right, fine. I'm done. I'm just going to get my 20 cloak, help Tobrell get his 5,000 favor, call it a life. And then the very next day, I was like, nope, screw it. That's quitter talk. Rolled up a brand new character, started doing favor, and I did, like I said, I was all the way up through against the Demon Queen. I'd done every quest except for um, uh, Temple of Elemental Evil on that character. I'd done everything uh, and the Titan Raid. I think I had done the, the, the pre-raid, but not the actual raid raid. But I had done everything else on that character. I was sitting pretty on favor. And I died. And I was like, ugh. And I was going to give up. But then I remembered this character still had almost 6,000, or almost 3,000 favor already done. I think I was like at 29 something or 28 something. Uh, I have to go back and watch the VOG to, uh, to, to know. And I was like, yeah, but it's going to be really tough because I missed, and we mathed it out, 200, or sorry, 312 favor. I missed off of these quests right here, give or take. So I was like, man, that's going to be really hard. I don't know if I can do it. But then we mathed. We used our math numbers. And we're like, okay, we can do it. We can do it. So these are things that I was just doing, helping Tobrell, helping Tobrell, helping Tobrell. Uh, I ended up two-manning toxic treatment with another guy. But all this stuff was stuff I was just helping Tobrell with. Right? Until all of a sudden he got his favor... And there were still three days left on the, three days left on the on the event. I'm like, can I do it? I guess I'm gonna try. And then we just crammed through as hard as I could. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I basically did quests. I did quests that I didn't know. Quests I didn't like. Look at this. I soloed Delirium on hard. I soloed uh, In the Flesh on hard. I did an acute delirium i soloed it on hard i did uh through the mirror darkly a quest that i despise and i don't know but i did it i did it on hard 
I did all these things. I'm, and I'm going to give extra credit to Beef, Load Beef, for really pushing me. Last night, I was done. I was cooked. I needed 212, 210 favor last night when I was ready to log off and I called it a night. Is that true? Maybe it's, yeah, I think so. 210. And I was, I was totally cooked. I was going to take out the trash. I was going to go to bed. And Beef was just like, it's not that hard, man. Just go do Through a Mirror Darkly. Go do Delirium 1. Go do Eyes of... Uh, Lord of Eyes. Just go do them. You're going to want that extra 40 favor. You're going to want it. Like, oh, I don't I don't think I care. Blah, blah, blah. He really pushed me hard. Kicked me in my pants. And I like, oh, I don't know, man. I'll see what I do. I took out the trash. It was like three degrees outside. I'm walking around, putting out the trash. Got that cold re, you know, rejuvenation you get from getting outside doing some work get that briskness in your face and I came back and I sat back down and I soloed those quests last night before going to bed it felt great so I got up this morning I knocked out um, knocked out a couple of things that I knew I could handle like rest stop on elite uh, knocked out a couple of things here and there I went and I did some hard storm horns some stuff I wasn't that comfortable in if it was something I was unsure of, I just did hard. But if it was something I felt pretty okay on, um, so like uh, breaking the ice, I did on Elite because that one I remembered enough of uh, to be able to do. Breaking the ranks, I didn't remember enough, so I just did it on hard. So like a lot of that kind of stuff. Like I said, we just tear through things. And then I got to, I had to take 20. I had to take 20 and I was a 95 short. And I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do keeps on the borderland at 20. That's 48 favor. And then I just need to do some chain one on hards and I'll, I'll make it. And, uh, Sky More, Sci-Fi More, who you might know from streaming, um, who I like to call Skamore, came in and was like, you're, you're epic now, I can help. And I'm like, yeah, man, let's do it. And together, he and I tore through, I think, five or six of the um, Battle of Eden, or uh, the new stuff, Keep on the Borderlands. And then I was constantly checking the LFM panel because I knew there's a couple of people in this level range looking for Chain 1, right? And I caught it caught the beginning of it it's like yes i jump in i start running and they go hey man by the way we're off to the second quest in the chain oh heartbreak like all right well i'll take whatever favor i can get if i have to turn around and rerun that quest on elite later so be it whatever doesn't matter and they they we knocked them all out they came back and they helped me and i knocked out i helped them do battle for evening star giving me the grand total of 5,024 favor. So, part of the reason that this was so important to me was that I decided literally on less than a week ago that I was going to make this happen, this 5,000 favor. But, but, this is the other thing. I didn't do... I hadn't soloed a character. I hadn't taken anyone to twenty, so I didn't have I didn't have a twenty cloak. Everything was on this character. This character had to do well, not everything. We'll get to the other thing, but this character had to do the twenty cloak, and this character had to do the bloody footprints if I was going to get them done. So part of the reason I was so like oh, I just want to get to level twenty, because I was afraid. I had reached the point where I was terrified that I was going to die. And if I died, I was going to not only lose my shot at the Bloody Footprints, but I was going to lose my shot at the 20 Cloak. The 20 Cloak that I kept saying would not be hard to do if I took the last week and knocked a character out to 20, that would be fine. I, I didn't have time. <laughs> so I was... I'm, it worked out. I'm really fortunate. But, man, I was, I was on the wire. I was 
I was on. It was ooh, pins and needles, pins and needles. So, don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. If I was going to next season, and we'll see what I actually do. But what I'd like to do, the fantasy Samus. Now Samus is telling future Samus. One, start things a little bit differently. First thing we're going to do, we're going to create our our next top of the line character first. Set it to the side. Leave it there. Two, we're going to take another character, build it like we think we want the first character to go, and that character is going to get to level 10 and basically be our low-level farmer. That person will sit there and do things like memory lapse, um, stuff like that. All those, all those awesome levels, all those little awesome quests. Maybe that character, if you your the pulls are really smooth, moves into Ravenloft. Maybe not, but then that that shows that. And then I take a character, run it to twenty. Make make a character that does doesn't work hard for it, doesn't do anything crazy, just runs up to twenty, gets all the plat, does all the things, is is uh is the the grizzly bear, the mama bear, the provider, the the uh the sugar daddy however you want to think about it then i make a sugar daddy character then once i have those things in place then i take the main character and figure out the new set of goals so i will that'll be the way that i take a tackle on a challenge like this again in the future farmer sugar daddy actual figuring out goals and do it the other thing that i'm going to do is i am going to try to have a better idea of what my goals are i'll try to set a short-term goal and a middle range goal and then i'll have a backup goal at the end in case you know i get to the the last week and i haven't achieved achieved what i wanted then i can really focus down on it but i i feel like if i have a goal to like start with like let's get a character to 20 or let's get a character to 30 whatever that is if i have that short-term goal and then i can have the okay now that we've accomplished this tier of stuff now let's do this middle part. The reason why I realize now in retrospect that I did this wrong is because my original plan was I'm just going to screw around, have fun, and make really interesting streams until like the last week and then I'll get serious and I'll get my level 20. I didn't have any real desire to get the 5,000 footprints, 5,000 favorite footprints, until Tobrell did it. <laughs> That's a good motivator is to have a friend succeed and you didn't oh my goodness anyway congratulations to everybody out there who achieved your goals whatever those goals may be um i'm really excited for this event I'm, or for another one of these events i really enjoyed this one and i'm so ready to take a little bit of time away from dungeons and dragons online and and stream some other things but man i the last week of this game I have I have played like 18 hour days I have played through bad bad migraines because I had goals that I wanted to do and I was having fun it is I enjoy playing DDO it's my one of my giveaway getaways it's definitely the like my favorite game to do when I'm just hanging out or playing with the guys or whatever but this this whole event was a real spur to challenge and at some point I'll record another video for things I think that they can do in the future um, but for now man it, this was a very good success for me personally um, but I better not say too much more because I think I have to record DDO cast tomorrow so if you're listening to DDO cast you're probably gonna hear a lot of the same stuff out of me or if you're watching DDO cast and you come to watch this video, you're probably going to have already heard a lot of the same information. Anyway, as always, please do that YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, follow. I really appreciate it. Check out the Twitch page, twitch.tv slash samusgorobo, S-A-M-I-U-S-G-O-R-O-B-O. -O. And of course, if you would like to help out monetarily, the best way to do that is to go over to patreon.com slash samus and donate there. One dollar a month, one cup of coffee is a big, big deal to somebody like myself who spends their days making content, trying to be entertaining, trying to be funny, and dying 
so you don't have to. All right, everybody, have a wonderful time. Hope you enjoyed the hardcore server as much as I did, and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Toodles.